going to be putting a rack of shelves right along this wall here. And the thing I really like about building them myself is that they have a lot of advantages over, say, buying the pre-made ones at the hardware stores. When you build your own, you can build it exactly to the size that you want to fit the area exactly and then you can make them as heavy duty or as light duty as you want. I just happen to have some 12 foot 2x4 that I had slated for a different project that's going to work perfect for this rack of shelves. Let's get started on that and then after that I'll be bringing in the workbench where I'll have all of my solar generators and everything else sitting. I have all of my supports cut and screwed together. If this was going to be a wider shelf and holding a lot of weight, I would probably put one every four feet. Instead, since this is just going to be light duty, I'm just going to put one roughly in the center and one on the far end. And this one is the most important brace of them all. So what I'm going to do to firm this up a little bit is I'm going to, once I have it attached to this two by four, I'm going to take a bit of OSB and I'm going to cover that up like that and that'll make on both sides and that'll make this main support way stronger and all the rest of them as, as I go up the next one I'll have my 2x4s the next one will sit up here I'll have it screwed into the 2x4 down below and up above on this far wall I don't have a support like that I'm just going to have individual pieces of wood screwed directly to the wall. And I also put a little brace along the back wall there so my 2x4 closest to the wall will be tied down in that direction as well. Here's the first layer in place. The reason I do 18 is so buckets will fit easily underneath there. Here it is with all three shelves completed. If you want to compare what this would cost if you were going to go out and buy a shelving unit the actual dimensions of this are 15 by 12 foot long. So you'd probably have to price three separate shelving units to see what they'd cost. And keep in mind that I was able to reuse a lot of wood with all this two by four everything. This whole shelving unit cost me about 150 bucks, 160 bucks, somewhere in there. So I've got 12 foot, 24 foot, 36 foot, and if you count the bottom layer, 48 feet of shelving now. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to load all of this up. I'm gonna clear off the workbench that I have in the garage. That way I don't have to handle everything twice. I can just bring it right in, set it in place. And then once the workbench is in place, I can bring in my solar generators, and get all of that stuff set up. I got the workbench moved around with the help of the neighbor and one thing I'm concerned about out here is the temperature building up too high and so what I'm going to do is have this EcoFlow that used to be out in the motorhome this is an AC unit low wattage I'm going to attach this 90 to it and then it's this extends right up. I'm going to vent it right out my existing screen right there. I'll build a little trap for it. But you can see one of the pecrons will sit right here. Hot air is going to be blown out of here. I'll have another battery sitting right here. And then the other one will sit on the other side over here. I want to get this installed before I get any further with this. And this is what I was talking about with the shelving unit stacking some stuff in here so I don't have to handle it all twice. Put a two by four already on there. That 
fires up, It'll kick all the hot air to the outside. So let's move on to setting up the Pecron. What I decided to do was set the main unit on top of one battery, put the second battery behind it, and if I want to add more batteries, then I can just stack them up right behind. This is going to be a little bit higher than I thought. However, it will put the touchscreen right even with my eyes, so it'll make it real easy to see it. When you get the battery pack, you get a whole bag full of these, which are going to swap out these. And what they actually do, these just slide down into place, but they give you connectors, metal connectors, that screw onto this unit, and then it's going to screw onto that unit too, all the way around. And that way, you tie the whole thing in together as one big unit. Parts pouch number one only had six screws when I needed eight. Now I have it all bolted together. Pretty simple. These were the old corners that slid right off. This is like a double corner. That's all one unit. Now this is all tied together and the second battery will fit right behind it. This is about 80 pounds. These are about 60 pounds. So that's 140 pounds right there. I could probably lift that off of there, but I definitely wouldn't want to try to lift it back up onto here, at least by myself. One of the reasons I bought this unit versus a lot of the other ones is I don't have a smartphone and I didn't want to have to use a application in a smartphone. And this little screen here does everything that an application would do. So what I want to do it's going to settings here. AC charging speed. It's at set at 100% right now. So if I plugged it into house current, it would charge at 100%. But what I want to do is slow charge it. 10%. Now I'm going to plug it into the cord that I've got over there, which I'm sure would handle a higher wattage, but I don't want to overload this thing. What it's showing is I've got 200 watts coming in and nothing going out right now. What I have here is 150 watts, up to 150 watts of solar input. This is 1200 watts, 150 volts, same here. So just in these three solar inputs, I have a potential of over 2500 watts of solar input. Now keep in mind, each one of these batteries can also handle on its own up to 400 watts of solar. So by the time this is all hooked together, I'll have nine kilowatts of storage and potentially 3,300, over 3,300 watts of potential solar input. And I'm gonna have two of these. Once they're all hooked up and running, I'll have over 7,000 watts available as far as powering devices and I'll have 6,600 watts of potential solar. The best case scenario would be to use all the electricity that I wanted during the day and still charge up the batteries during a solar day to the point where they were full or nearly full at night and then have enough battery capacity to run whatever I need to run all night long when the sun ain't shining as just feeding off of batteries and then the next day when the sun comes up fill those batteries back up again and use as much power as i want what i need to figure out is exactly what kind of wattage i'm going to be using throughout the day and exactly how much i'm generating off of the panels that i have the sun gold 560 watt panels i'll have two of them going into each one of these ports on each machine potentially i'll buy four more around 400 watt panels to plug into these now thanks to ramblin bob's reviews he pointed out that this dial right here you have to set this before you hook it up so that the host unit will recognize the batteries and your first battery is zero 
your second one is one if you added a third and a fourth that would be two and three and you're never going to use four or five it's already set to zero the arrow is pointed straight up the next one that i hook up i'm going to rotate the little button over to one before i hook it up as soon as i hook it up you can see the lights coming on but now it's showing hook up the third one and then we should see this one lit up as well and here you can see the third battery is up. here is the mc4 connector for the battery input you can see it hooked up right here i can add solar panels directly to that and here you can see mc4 to xt60 we got the second one set up and charging I haven't hooked the battery to the main unit yet. I wanted to show you a fairly substantial metal clip here that puts this together. I got the clock set. Here you can see uh, the two batteries hooked up, two showing disconnected, meaning I could hook up two more. I'm gonna let them charge for a while. Well, here's what they look like all set up. They've been charging a couple hours. I'm gonna play with them a bit more get started on the solar panels pretty quick. If you don't want to miss any of it, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm John at the Whatever Garage. Hope to see you again soon.